If you want to be a player in today's marketplace, you have to be FedEx fast and Mickey friendly. That's the headline. When I get an email from a CEO, he says, I want to tell you that teamwork and communications in our firm have never been as good as they are right now. And, and I get juiced by that because that means they've done something on the job that made that a better, more productive place to work. And that's really what I'm all about. Through the lens of your customers, the competition is anybody they experience in a similar fashion, which literally makes your competition FedEx, Disney, Land's End, L.L. Bean, their favorite restaurant. Do your customers go to Starbucks? Yes. Do they walk into Starbucks? Yes. Do they walk into your salon? They do. They compare that entrance. One of the ways companies become even better than they already are is learning from great companies. So I look at a FedEx, I look at a Disney, I look at companies that are iconic in the way they position their brand within the marketplace. And I say, what are they doing? What lessons can the rest of us learn from them that we can take back and apply in our business? Because they say, here's what great looks like, and here's how you can get there too. You can do an even better job than you're already doing right now. Those of you who have been to Disney, how many had trouble finding your car coming out of the Magic Kingdom at the end of the day? Okay, so one, two, I'd say about eight people. Watch how many hands go up with this question. How many people have ever had trouble finding your car coming out of the shopping mall or the airport? Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Why the difference? Among other things, Disney has a vice president in charge of parking lots. Why would Disney have a vice president in charge of parking lots? They want to manage our first impression and they want to manage our last impression. The first impression of Disney, it is the parking lot. Consumer drives up, they got three sub-consumers in the back seat. Up they come. And as they're pulling the car in, Kid's saying, up, 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 whoa, he says, stop right there. And he says, please remember to take your keys, lock your car, and remember that you are parked in Goofy's own C. <laughs> now, the first time I heard that, I thought, isn't that cute? <laughs> they got the Goofy lot, the Pluto lot, the Mini lot. It's part of a system. Part of a system from two perspectives. First of all, if you and I forget where we parked the car, who's going to remember? The kids, mom, dad, we're in a goofy lot, we're in a goofy lot. <laughs> the other way it's part of a system is you and I go over, we sit down in the tram. Kid driving the tram says, welcome aboard, folks, by the way. Those of you who just board the tram are parked in goofy zone C, second time. So at the end of the day, when you're through enjoying the Magic Kingdom, you want to get back to your car, remember that you want to go back to goofy zone C, third time. They found that they told us once, 75% of us remember. Tell us twice, 95% of us remember. Tell us three times, everybody except those eight people remember <laughs> exactly where they parked the car. Even though the issue may be the same, every audience, every individual, every division, every company is unique in different ways. And so you have to integrate the uniqueness into some solutions that are gonna get them where they wanna go. In Fantasyland, there's an attraction called Cinderella's Fountain. And there's a statue of Cinderella. There's a curved masonry wall behind Cinderella. And, you know, there's water spraying up. It's kind of nice. That's what we see from adult height. If you get down and you look at that, not from adult height, for, but from kid height, embedded in the masonry wall where you cannot see it from adult height, but you can see it is a crown, and from kid height, the crown sits on Cinderella's head. And a question I would ask each and every one of you is do you pass the Cinderella fountain test? So like the Cinderella fountain, I found out from people exactly how that works. And I thought, boy, that's a really powerful way for somebody to look at it and ask the question, do we pass the Cinderella fountain test every single day? When we look at a policy or procedure or make a decision, are we looking at it through the customer's eyes? FedEx comes into our office two, three, sometimes four times during the course of the week. When the FedEx guy comes in, he moves about like this. Hey, Tom, he says, here you go. He says, uh, take care, I'll catch you later, day after now. See you tomorrow, bye, off he goes. 
and I'm watching them day after day after day after week. After. Finally, one day, I just couldn't take anymore. I grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. I said, you really move. Well, he says, I move right along. I said, you're practically running. Up, oh, up. Oh. He says, I never run. He said, I never run. He said, we're told not to run. If I were to run, you might consider me as being late. Absolutely right. They're managing that moment of truth. They're managing that customer experience. They're managing that touch point. To the degree where their frontline contact people are told, and the actual phrase they use is, walk quickly with purpose. FedEx does that because they know that they are in the memory management business. The question I would ask you is, what would your customers say if we put them in front of your group and asked them to describe the good, the bad, the ugly of doing business with you? What would you like them to say? And what might they really say? That's the question you have to answer. In 1984, I had the opportunity to carry an Olympic torch. For me, it represents a reminder. It's a touch. I should always look at ways that I can be better today than I was yesterday. And isn't, isn't that what life is all about? Isn't that what leadership is all about? For each of us and each of our team members to work at being a little bit better today than we were yesterday. Is there anybody in the room who cannot take something we looked at here during lunch today and be at least 1% better in something you do by the close of business on Monday? Anybody who cannot do that? Okay, that's all I'm asking. 1% better by the close of business on Monday. If you do that 71 days in a row, because getting better works like compounding interest, it builds on itself, on the 71st day, you'll be twice as good as you were on the first day. On the 41st day, you would have been 50% better. And if you did it 365 days in a row, on that 365th day, you would be 3,700% better. Sidious, audius, fortius, swifter, higher, stronger, you being a little bit better every day, that's all I'm asking. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.